I am Dr. Sterling from the Departments of Pediatrics and Orthopedics. This video will focus on the musculoskeletal examination of the knee. We will review several aspects of knee examination, including inspection, palpation of the superficial anatomy, assessment of range of motion and muscle strength, tests to assess injuries to the patella, the ligaments of the knee, and the menisci. When viewing this film, pay particular attention to hand placement when performing these tests. Of course, prior to beginning any examination, it is important that you wash your hands prior to approaching the patient. First, I'd like to take a look at both knees, and I'd like to see if there are any noticeable deformities or any evidence of joint diffusion. And it doesn't appear that there are any at this point. The next aspect of the examination I'd like to review is palpation of the superficial anatomy. I'd like to begin by using the inferior aspect of the patella as a starting point and palpate at the inferior aspect of the patella, moving along the patella tendon, moving down to the insertion of the patella tendon. Next, I move back to the center of the patella tendon and I move medially and palpate along the medial aspect of the tibial plateau out to where the meniscus would be located, looking for any, any aspects of tenderness. I move back to the medial aspect of the patella tendon and up to the femoral condyle, again palping for any tenderness. Again, localizing at the patella tendon and moving outwards along the lateral aspect of the tibial plateau. You can feel where the lateral meniscus is located in palpate for tenderness. And moving a little bit further out, you can feel almost a piano cord-like structure and that is known as the lateral collateral ligament. Now, to palpate this even further, Tim, would you mind crossing your legs? If you begin at the medial aspect of the patella tendon and move your hand out along the joint line, you can feel a hard cord-like structure, and that is the lateral collateral ligament. Next, we're going to assess range of motion and muscle strength. And we're going to combine the two assessments into one in order to make it the most comfortable for the patient. Tim, I'd like you to extend your knee as, mu as far as you possibly can. OK. Can you hold it up there for a second? Mm -hmm. You can get a general I idea of muscle symmetry of the knee extensors by viewing the extensor musculature in the, in the thigh. Tim, I'd like you to hold your knee up, okay. and I'm going to take an assessment of your muscle strength. I'm going to push down with one hand approximately three times. One, two, three. OK, you can bend your knee now. In order to assess knee flexion, have the patient laying in a supine position. Tim, can I ask you to bend your knee as far as it will go? Very good. OK. The next aspect of the knee examination is to assess for a joint effusion in the knee. In order to do this, you take your non-dominant hand, make a V, place it on the medial aspect of the distal femur, and move it down, applying downward pressure, attempting to capture and move any fluid that is present into the knee itself. The next aspect is to gently press downward on the medial aspect of the patella. If a joint effusion is noted, there will be a sensation of the kneecap floating at that time. Okay. One more test to perform on the patella is known as the Teleapprehension test is very helpful in assessing for 
recurrent subluxations or dislocations of the patella. In order to perform this test, the knee is gently flexed to about approximately 20 degrees of knee flexion with your non-dominant hand providing support. Your thumb is placed on the lateral aspect of the patella and gently push medially. A positive test is one which pain is elicited. After assessing for effusion, we'd like to, at this point, do a special test for ligamental instability. The first test I'm going to perform is known as the anterior draw test. Knee is bent in approximately 60 degrees of knee flexion. That is stabilized by the examiner sitting on the foot gently. Hands are placed along the proximal tibia and a movement is performed in which the tibia is drawn forward on the femur. The movement is in this direction. A positive test is one in which movement is noted. The next test that we're going to perform is another test for anterior cruciate ligament injury. It's a much more sensitive test when the, the cruciate ligament is acutely injured. In order to perform this test, the non-dominant hand is placed underneath the distal femur and provides support. The right hand is placed encircling the proximal tibia. The left hand provides stabilization. The, the dominant hand or right hand provides movement. The movement is in upward direction. And the test is performed in this manner. Approximately 20 to 30 degrees of knee flexion is important to in order to achieve a positive test. A positive test is one in which ligamental laxity is noted. We're now going to assess stability of the posterior cruciate ligament. The test that we perform is known as the posterior draw test. The knee is placed in approximately 60 degrees of knee flexion. This, the difference between the test for the anterior and posterior cruciate ligament is that the, in this test, the movement is, is pushing as opposed to pulling forward. In order to perform the test, the foot is stabilized hands are placed on the proximal aspect of the tibia and the movement is a pushing movement forward. Any evidence of movement is indicative of posterior cruciate ligament instability. We are next going to assess stability of the collateral ligaments. The first examination I will perform will be examination of the medial collateral ligament. In order to perform this test, the hip is abducted by gently moving the hip with knee extension. The left hand is placed along the joint line to provide stability. The right hand captures the foot and again in order to perform stability and some leverage. The knee is gently flexed into approximately 20 or 30 degrees palpate along the medial joint line and gently provo provide a valgus stress moving outward in this manner. Any ligamental instability will elicit pain or some movement. Next we're going to assess the lateral collateral ligament in order to perform this test, again, the hip is abducted at approximately 60 degrees. The examiner catches the foot, in, again, in order to perform stability and some leverage. The knee is gently flexed, approximately 20 degrees. The palm of the right hand is placed on the medial aspect of the joint, and there's a force generated immediately. Any instability noted indicates 
injury to the lateral collateral ligament. I'm next going to examine both menisci. In order to perform this test, the foot is supported by the right hand at the heel. The knee is gently moved into flexion. The left hand is made into a V and the index finger is placed along the medial joint line. The knee is moved into flexion. The foot is externally rotates the tibia, moving outward in this manner. Again, knee is placed in deflection, fingers into the V, foot is turned outward, knee is extended. The other meniscus is evaluated in a similar manner. Knee is flexed, palpation along both the medial and lateral joint line. The foot is inverted, and knee is extended. One more time, knee into flexion, foot is inverted and extended. This film has reviewed the physical examination of the knee. By approaching knee examination in a systematic manner, which includes inspection, palpation of superficial anatomy, assessment of muscle strength, followed by examination of the ligaments and menisci, you will be able to perform a comprehensive examination which will enable you to make an accurate diagnosis of those patients who present with knee pain.